How's it going, everybody? Doing a request here today. It's a video game ramble related requ request. I'll be two doing two things I was asked about in this. One person asked me to talk about like uh, the video games now and how things have changed from back you know, back in the day. And then uh, somebody else was asking about like, I mean, like a top, I think it was top five Nintendo 64. There was a couple different consoles I think they had mentioned, but I'm going to talk about my top five Nintendo 64 games uh, in here as well. Sorry, I just wanted to knock that mic down a little bit, but I'm going to start with, you know, video games now and the differences back then. And they gave a few examples, like Call of Duty, Mad, and stuff like that. I think Fortnite was in there, but I don't... I've never played Fortnite, so... Um, but obviously the first thing is, you know, graphically, the leaps. I think at least for me, like, when I started playing, it was mostly the, you know, the 8-bit stuff. Um, and then moving forward, Commodore, Atari 7800, Nintendo, Genesis, Turbo Graphics. Super Nintendo, etc., and then you, you got to leap to the 3D. You know, when I first saw Mario 64, I was just like, that might still be the biggest like wow moment for me for games was Mario 64. Just seeing how amazing that looked at the time. Um, I said, now you know, obviously now you're in the HD era, and it's it's just getting better and better. You know, I mean, some of these games look almost realistic at this point. I remember actually this was probably early 360 PS3. I mean, it was like 06, 07, it was probably about 07, maybe even 08. Um, I got into a Best Buy and I saw uh, like a wrestling, it was wrestling on TV. I'm like, wrestling isn't on tonight. <laughs> it was a video game. It looked, you know, I, I was uh, from a distance, but still, like, it was on a big TV. It was, I was even back then. Um, obviously the graphical jump is a big thing um, you know from like my personal experience with sport games I don't play many sport games anymore because they have you know I grew up on the two button stuff on the NES and then Genesis Super Nintendo stuff and I was still playing sport games up until fairly consistently up until Xbox, PS2, GameCube era. I played um, ESPN NFL 2K5 is the last, I want to say the last sport game I put a lot of time into. I love that game. It's my favorite football game. That was before, that was the first, last game that came out before EA bought up the NFL license because they probably realized 2K5 was better than their Madden 05 and it was 20 bucks when it released. Um, and then, you know, I've played stuff from time to time, but not a lot. I do personally prefer the older stuff because the jump in controls for me, like I, I can still play a Madden and stuff, but I wouldn't be able to personally probably play it competitively. I'm not get destroyed. Um, I hate to say it's a little too complicated for me because it really wouldn't be, but I just like the more kind of simplicity of the older sport games. You know, and then there's so much, th there's so many things you can do. I almost am more interested in, like, the GM mode type stuff. And that's why, like, the NFL head coaches were always kind of intriguing um, to do all the other stuff. Uh, but I always like, you know, like, the Tecmo Bowl games, Tecmo Bowl, Tecmo Super Bowl. Those are probably, like, my favorite. I guess, I guess to play, like, 2K5, is, NFL 2K5 is probably my favorite football game because it, maintained like an arcade almost style to it almost still being like a simulation um but the, the Tecmo Super Bowl games are super fun to play and they keep stats and I like when it's just like stats kept I don't necessarily care about trades um from those games like I think some of the later ones you could trade but it's just quick playing super fun fast 
you know, the games, I think, I think all the, the sport games were a bit faster back then. They kind of slowed them down to kind of realistic <laughs> speeds. Um, because certain guys back in all the sport games back in the day, some guys would be like over like a Bo, you know, everybody knows Bo Jackson from Tecmo Bowl, like ridiculously fast, like, you know. But, you know, then they, they introduced like the player grades and stuff like that, so. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, sports just became... There's a lot more stuff to do in sports. You know, you're doing, I mean, you were able to do audibles and stuff back then too, but in football, but so much more stuff. Like, oh, you can set the defenses up this way and you do this. I mean, some of that stuff was also there back in the Genesis days, but, you know, it's, you, you got to be more focused, I think. Um, I'd love to get into some kind of game, maybe like one of the MLBs or something. I got that one that I got at the garage show, the MLB the show. I think I'm Madden 20 there too. I got a garage sale for a buck. <laughs> um, but yeah, they just changed, obviously, graphically, and it was just, they were more involved, you know. The games now, they became more involved. Now they've reached a point where they kind of, the same thing every year. Um, that's why I'm surprised they don't just do, like, I mean, I actually, I can't, I can't say I'm surprised because they don't do it because they wouldn't make the money, but if they even had an option, do they? I don't think they do where, like, it'd be, like, $40 for full new rosters or, like, $30. You can just download them to the game you have. And the rosters can update that way, but you know, they wouldn't make the money they make. And, you know, obviously back then, you know, you had adventure-type games, but they became so incredible. Elder Scrolls-type stuff. Knights of the Old Republic and shit like that. Like, that's what I love about I prefer older games in some ways, but one of the ways I prefer newer games is that the game, the, the game worlds are just so detailed and in-depth, and it just draw, it draws you in, and it's just so realized, you know, you're able to so realize these worlds, that obviously you couldn't do back then, but back then it was more like your imagination would fill in some of the gaps in some games, you know, where graphically it couldn't do it. You know, shooters, for me, I guess they really haven't changed too much because, well, you know, I go back to, like, Doom and Wolfenstein on the PCs. Um, you know, and then it moved forward with, um, I don't know, like GoldenEye, for example, was such a great console shooter. Um, I'll talk about that again in my top five. Nintendo 64 bids um and that kind of changed the game especially for console shooters i should say because a lot of people prefer playing shooters on pc with the mouse and keyboard because they say it's it's just a better control once you get used to it it's just more accurate and more precise or whatever you know the call of duty start coming out and that changes the game they've stuck to the world war ii stuff and then they moved into the you know modern warfare series, and then it changed there as well, which they needed to do because a lot of people were getting a little tired of that. And then they brought back more of the World War II stuff. We saw some World War One. You see the Black Ops stuff is like the Cold War era stuff, Vietnam era stuff as well. And there's been other ones over the years, like so even Civil War shooters. I think there were. Um, so they've gone all over the map now, but it's mostly just. It was mostly just World War Two, and, you know, the modern stuff. But Infinite Warfare was really cool, because, and that was kind of a jump, too, because it took it, like, some of it was in space, which was kind of cool. Um, I really liked that game. Um, but it, they introduced the, you know, for me, GoldenEye, you know, it was a four-player multiplayer. We played it the other day, me and my friends, you know, like, I still play it, so it still, for us, holds up. But... And you're talking 20 plus years after we first would have played it. The multiplayer mode. Like Halo was another one that brought, you could do like the, the system link on the original Halo where you'd have to have two TVs and two Xboxes, but you could actually play eight players, I'm pretty sure. With that Call of Duty, that couldn't have been the old Medal of Honors as well were coming around. They were, I think, were they around before Call of Duty? The first, yeah, I think the first Medal of Honor definitely was on. Yeah, I think came out before Call of Duty's. 
then they kind of fell off. Do they still make Medal of Honors? Or they just call them the battlefields now, EA? But the multiplayer got bigger, you know, as it went on, like team battles. Some I remember playing Resistance, the first Resistance on PS3, and it was like 40 people in a, in a, in a death match. It was crazy. And now they have that even more with some of the battlefield games and stuff. You have and they have some of the other shooters as well. Just, you can do more than you could back in the day, even 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Now you get massive battles. And you have the Star, like Star Wars games as well. Um, that's another reason, like, the graphics are great. You know, because you see, like, back in the day, I would play, like, for example, when it comes to Star Wars, like the Super Star Wars, Super Empire Strikes Back. It was so cool. Because, you're like, this looks like the movie, but now you see it and you're like, oh, my God, like, we're on Tatooine. It's freaking full 3D. You can just do all this shit. And it's awesome. Like, uh, like Knights of the Republic was great with that. Even though that takes place like 4,000 years in the past in Star Wars universe, you're seeing these planets, you're doing all this cool stuff. and That's the, the greatest thing about the, the newer games. That the, like I said, the worlds are so realized and you're just like, oh my God. But even sometimes I still like playing the 2D stuff, you know. Um, but I guess, I mean, overall, you know, for me, not, I guess a lot has changed. Um, you know, graphically, gameplay as well. Like in, in some points, obviously, once the thumbsticks got involved, went away from, went away from the D pads and stuff like that. You know, made control better on games. You could do more. Um, as well, sometimes for me, controls uh, get a little too much. But you know, sometimes it's nice to go back and play a little two button action. You know. You have to learn more and stuff. It's more, like I said, involved um, than it used to be. Although games were harder back then than they were now. There's some games that are super hard now, but a lot of the reasons they were harder back then is because you couldn't save. You'd have a limited amount of continues. Once you die and then you're out of continues, you start from the beginning. Some of those games were like a half hour long, 20 minutes long, but you'd have it for months. You wouldn't beat it for months because... You turn it off, or you have to leave your system on. <laughs> so thankfully, when the hard drives got involved, and this was a thing on PC first, but like the Xbox, the original Xbox, when they introduced the hard drive, and you didn't need a memory card either, because then it was memory cards you were using to save your games. Some games back in the Nintendo era, you could save on. They had a little thing in there that you could save. I think Zelda did. Uh, Kirby's Adventure, I believe, had a save on it. The Tecmo Super Bowl had a save on it. I don't think Tecmo Bowl did. Um, the back of the cart was like orange or gold it indicated that you could you know it was a safe thing but those little safe batteries would burn out over time super nintendo as well they used the password systems back then uh, on platforms which was annoying sometimes <laughs> yeah i gotta remember right down these passwords um but you know xbox when xbox introduced like a hard drive in the system it was like oh my god here we go you know you didn't have to worry about space anymore during that time. Now, since you install the games onto the systems, they give you a terabyte hard drive and it's still ain't enough. Now, even though it's not a true terabyte, it's probably like 900 or 800, high 800s after all the system memory and shit, but it's a nice time space. The problem is they fill up because the games are so big. Like I said, huge game worlds and then you get the cutscenes and stuff that you didn't get back in the day. Back in the early days, they worked like Ninja Gaiden and the NES had little cut, what you call, what we call cutscenes. And then you got more in the PS2 era, I'm sorry, the PlayStation era, like um, you got stuff, even like the Sega CD and shit like that. Um, but yeah. And you, like I said, you could just do, like I said, you could do more, you can games or you have survival horror games and stuff like that. Games will creep you out. You have 3D, I mean, not 3D, uh, VR now, you know, Oculus and PlayStation, uh, Steam has theirs as well. Where you're like literally in there and then you're getting the real experience, you know. Um, like I said, that Resident Evil 4, when I played on the Oculus Quest, was one of the best game experiences I've ever had. It was awesome. And stuff like the Wii. With the Wii Remote, they opened up some stuff. We have the periphery, the gun. You can play light gun games are more fun to play. 
and then when the PS PlayStation had theirs, and Connect, I think Xbox had Connect. Do they still bother with Connect? I don't even know. Um, but the Wii Remote, you know, with the bowling and stuff, it was just so addictive to do it like that and get you a little more involved physically. Um, you know. But you can just do more with games now, you know. Even the indie stuff they're doing, you know, your mystery games. And you had, funny thing is you had a lot of that back in the day. And then you see, you don't even realize you had it back then. And then you start playing games. And like, I remember playing these games back then. They were very similar. Like point and click games are like the kind of the original mystery type games. Even the text based stuff from like, what was it? Was it Zork? I forget what it was called. Where it was this all literally text and you'd choose things, you know? Especially like the older PC stuff, they were doing a lot of shit. And then, you know, and back in the day, you got a Commodore 64, you could like make copies of your games and give them to your friends. The Dreamcast was, I think, had a problem. They didn't have any protection shit on their system. So people would literally like copy the discs and shit. It was part of one of the reasons I got screwed too, outside of not having a DVD drive in there. But, um, you know, and handhelds as well start off. I had that Game Boy. It was different small screens stuff you playing, but it was so revolutionary. And then the Game Gear and Atari Lynx were both color, but they didn't have to sell it. And then, you know, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance really changed the game. And then the 3DS, you were able to do a lot of stuff. But now it's just the Switch, you know. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a, a ramble on that. I don't know how well I did with that, but, you know trying to think of things um, you know I look at the games I have just looking in there and there's just so many different categories of games you know um, and sometimes like I said sometimes you get burnt out like oh, it's like I want new Elder Scrolls and part of me is like oh my god am I going to be able to handle a new Elder Scrolls in terms of just like the scope it's probably going to have and play in a massive game world and then you get into it and you play it for a few hours and all of a sudden you're in but sometimes it's nice to just play a simple game. And even with the Steam stuff, like the Payne's Creek Killing and uh, Suicide of Rachel Foster and... Uh, oh, what's that other one? Um, Vanishing of Ethan Carter. It's cool just playing those games that aren't overly long, but they're nice mysteries and they're fun to play and they're immersive. It's nice. Um, I like that sometimes, you know. Especially when the prices are cheap during the sales. But, um, but yeah. All right, so second little part of this is going to be... Um, top five Nintendo 64 games. I have three of them here. Um, but I'll start off with number five, and I'll work my way to the best. Uh, I, I had a little bit of struggle with, with number five. I'm going to say it's a Scooby-Doo. Classic Creep Capers. I really enjoyed this game uh, when I first got it. It was just a cool, once again, mystery type game. It's Scooby Doo, of course. I think there was four episodes and then like a, another one, but it wasn't really much of an episode yet. Like Rescue the Rest of the Gang. I think it was four. It might have been three. I don't know. Very short game, unfortunately, but it was cool. It was very well done in the Scooby Doo universe. Each area, mystery, whatever you want to call it, episode had a one of the classic villains from the show. And it looked really nice back then. Um, I just like the Scooby-Doo stuff. This is not my original one. The original game I had back in the day was uh, Black Cartridge. It's just a gray one. It was really cool. You used Shag and Scoob, and then the rest of the gang would help you out. Um, you know, throughout. That's cool. it's a, like I said, it's kind of point and click as you're finding items you need to do stuff. And I think there's a couple of parts in each level where you just eat a bunch of food, you know, and scoop and shaggy. But you, know, you got to find certain things and solve mystery, you know. But that's definitely number five. Now, three and four. Four and three, I do not own. Number four is Star Fox 64. Another short game, but Star Fox 64 is awesome. It had replay value, 
and it had branching paths as well. Um, so you'd play through twice to get the full experience, but the thing I liked about the replay value is that I was always trying to beat my score, which back then that's what you try to do. That's another thing I should talk about. Games have changed, so I'm going to go back into that real quickly. Back then you wanted to beat your high scores and stuff, you know. That was the draw of playing a lot of games, high scores. They Now it's more the multiplayer competitiveness is the different kind of high score stuff. But back then it was trying to beat other people's scores. There was also competitive games as well, sport games, Mortal Kombat, the fighting games and stuff. But it was trying to beat a high score, you know, in Tetris and Mario. All the games gave you points and stuff. That obviously went away with that, so it's a little bit different. Um... But yeah, Star Fox 64. It was just cool. You're obviously using Fox McCloud. You have your buddies, with the Falco, Peppy, and uh, Peppy. Falco was the dick. Falco's like the dick who will be there for you in the end, but he's a dick. He's going to be a dick. <laughs> Falco, Peppy, Fox, and Peppy was the, f the rabbit. Slippy was the toad. It was a very cool combat game. It was a sequel to the original. Actually, I guess it was a sequel to Star Fox 2. Which I don't think ever got released. And then they did release it on the Super Nintendo Mini. It was like a prototype. But I don't know. It's a really cool game. Cool dog fights and stuff. Cool levels. You fight big bosses and stuff. Another game that looked great at the time. Really good soundtrack as well. Um, I said kind of short, but still fun. It had replay value because you're like, I want to just beat my high score. I want to shoot it down as many enemies as possible. And you had good dog fights against like, what was it, like Star Wolf, I think, and his buddies. Yeah, there was a lot of cool stuff going on in that game. Um, like I said, it was just it was just fun. Um, I think you, I think you lose a little bit of that. I mean, you have the indie stuff now with games, but. kind of lose that just kind of arcade fun sometimes um and that's what that game was so fox is so fox explores excellent uh, number three zelda ocarina of time amazing game another one where i first played it i was like holy shit i admittedly did get the strategy guide for it and used it a few times because zelda games can be a little tough sometimes to figure out what to do next. Sometimes, you know. Once again, a great game. You're obviously Link. Um, the Ocarina is in this one, so you're like switching times and stuff. You play certain songs on there. But it was really cool. It had the different temples or whatever you would go into. I think the water temple was notoriously annoying. Um, but once again, you're solving puzzles, you're doing stuff. And the cool thing about the Zelda games is you get the new equipment and then you can access areas you couldn't access which is always cool even more so in the 2d zeldas um it was always a great sense of like accomplishment in zelda games when you got something new and you hear a little doo -doo -doo, little thing jingle when you open a chest or you get something new and it was just fun it was in 3d now same thing with mario it's such a big deal you're doing you know different things and stuff and you get the horse in this one Sapona, is that the horse's name? And you're doing different things. You start off as a kid. <clears throat> Pretty sure you see Gaddon when he's younger, and then at the end of the game, he turns into some giant Gaddon. Was he? It was Gandorf, I think, and then he turns into whatever the fuck he turns into a giant creature. At the end, you're fighting on the top of a building or something. Not building, but like top of something. Um, once again, just a cool game, fairly long. And like I said, sometimes you have to look for that. Look at that strategy guy and see what am I missing here, you know? Because sometimes you're like, where do I go? That's always cool because there's different areas to explore. You get the new area. It's such like, oh, here we go, you know? Here comes the fun. How am I going to figure out things and stuff like that? Um, I mean, it's a classic. It's a, just a known classic. Like, it's, not, it's not like some kind of weird game to have in your top five. A lot of people are doing top five. Nintendo 64 videos, Zelda would probably be in a lot of them. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's 
number three. Oh, here's top two. And I have this one because we were playing it the other night. My friend left the game here and his extra controllers. But and number two is uh, GoldenEye. 007 GoldenEye. Changed the game for me. It changed the game for shooters, especially, I should say, console shooters. It changed the game, the game for. Um, just incredible. And like I said, I played this before I saw the movie. This came out two years after the movie. And then I saw the movie. I'm like, it's the same thing. Like, they rare hit it out of the park with this. I think there's a, there was a documentary how, like, the multiplayer was, like, last-minute stuff. So they didn't even, I guess, do it as good as they could have. But maybe that would have was a good thing that they didn't. I said, you using James Bond here. You're going through the game. A couple different difficulty levels. You got agent, secret agent, double O agent. And the cool thing about it was that you could, like each difficulty level had different objectives. Um, you play on agent, you only got to do a few things. Double O agent, it adds something. Secret agent, or no, secret agent, it adds something. Double agent is another thing. So it was a nice way the difficulty was. It was extra things you had to do on top of, you know, taking more punishment and taking, you know, longer to kill enemies. Um, like I said, follow the movie exact, literally, like, it was just a cool shooter. Some of the levels are, are short and small, but some of them are, you know, a little more open. So you're doing a little more stuff which is cool. Graphically, it looked good. It still holds up fairly well. Um, but the single player was great. Like, it was a great campaign. There was a couple, once you did certain things, if you beat certain levels in, like, certain times and stuff, you don't unlock bonus modes and big head mode and paintball mode, shit like that. And uh, you opened up, a, there was a Moonraker level from that movie and another one from one of the other movies. There's two additional levels you can play. Um, and I still have my original strategy guide from this game. Um, I've showed it before, obviously. I've done turn page sharing videos of it. But the multiplayer, though, once I uh, we un found out about the multiplayer, <laughs> it's a whole other game. Like, the shooters now. We had so much fun. We still play it to this day. Not as many like back then. Like, everybody would try playing it, even if they sucked. People were into playing it because it was so fun. And we played... The regular way, there's a couple different modes. We played the regular way in Deathmatch. There was teams, there was like a King of the Hill thing. It was like a, you only live once. Um, and then there was License to Kill, which is what we settled into as one shot kill. And it was just fun. You're talking shit with your friends right there. Had a di bunch of different maps. Some were maybe a little too big for only four people. It was just a multiplayer, still fun to this day. I love it. Um, and it's just an awesome first-person shooter. The campaign is great, and the multiplayer is great. Like, it's worth it just to play the single player. It's just that good. Like I said, you have the different difficulty levels that add. You know, each difficulty level adds adding some extra stuff, so you're doing some extra things, which is cool as well. So it gives that replayability to want to try to beat it on every level, which is nice, but can't go wrong with GoldenEye. And number one, we all know number one is, if you've seen my top video game videos, uh, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. My friend and I played this originally back in the day, and we would switch off, play the shit out of this game. And we had no guide for this game, so we were getting stuck on stuff for like a week. You know, maybe another friend would be watching, and they'd give us a tip. Eventually, we figured it out, but... Like I said, in the game, past this game, only was ended up being released in Blockbuster. Um, my friend actually had a pre-order on uh, is either an EB or GameStop, Funko Land, whatever they were called back then, and uh, Babbage's, <laughs> um, and he they canceled his pre-order, he's got his money back, and it only came out in Blockbuster, um, I mean, that's a big reason this game has value, it's not like it's overly expensive, but it has value mainly because of that, um, and there's glitches in this game. That's the only downfall of it is there, sometimes you'll just fall into nothing. Another time on the raft level, you'll get stuck on a rock and stuck there forever. But it's such a cool adventure game. It's awesome. There's tons of different locations. 
you're finding stuff, you're just you're doing things, the, the combat's pretty good. Um, it looked good for the time, it still looks alright now. Um, it was a big game, there was a lot to do. Good amount of levels, and you had to find treasures in each level, so this, you can go back to levels and try to find treasures you missed. Because it'll tell you, like, there's like they're like blacked out, and then you'll see at the end of the level how many you got, and you can see the ones you missed. Um, there's some variation. Use a Jeep at one point. Like I said, you're on a raft for a little bit on one level. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Any other different variations. You, you know, you'll have to swim and stuff like that. You're using the whip a bunch. You get different kind of guns. Not a ton of guns, but different enemies, obviously soldiers and shit like that. And there'll be snakes and some other, you know, animal-related enemies. Infernal, I can't remember the true ending. I think it has something to do with aliens, oddly enough. That crystal skull ended up doing that. Um, but like I said, there's varied levels and stuff. It's just a fantastic game. I recommend anyone play this. It's on Steam as well. I tried playing it on Steam, and it fucking froze. I was like, of course it did, because it's Indiana Jones Infernal Machine. It's some kind of glitch. Um, but yeah. I also have it on the Game Boy Color, but... It's the same game, but it's obviously it doesn't look the same. Uh, but you can't go wrong with this game. You really can. It's just a, a fantastic adventure game. Check it out if you can. But yeah, it's kind of a dual request there, talking about video games past and present and changes and stuff. Um, and top five. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, Nintendo 64 games. And uh, thank you for, thanks everybody for checking us out, and have a good day.